like to stand, please, for the nation. <laughs> to our 2023 Junior School Prize giving. Today is a special opportunity for us to come together as a school family to recognise the achievements of our students in their academic studies, sports, the arts and service to the Junior School. It is wonderful that all these events are so well attended and supported by our families. Being part of your children's learning is so important. From fundraising such as calendars and the colour run to assisting with trips, camp in the classroom, the library with lucky book orders, special competitions and coaching. The number of hours that you, our parent community, put in is hugely appreciated. Thank you. To the school board and board of governors, our school community is fortunate to have such a capable and hard working team leading and governing the school. To all the junior school staff, thank you for all your hard work, care and dedication to enable our children to accomplish all they have this year. And finally, to the students, a big thank you to you. You have been amazing pupils who have worked so hard and achieved so well in your learning adventure in 2023. Thank you to you all. Before we begin our prize giving this morning, I'd like to invite Liam and Valerie to come forward, please, to lead us in the school karaoke. Me and I, Papa. Let us pray.
I would like to invite the Year Zero One class to come forward, please. The Year Zero One children will be presented with certificates of achievement. We would appreciate if you would please hold your applause until the last student has crossed the stage. Eliza Ears. Phoebe Ears. Hunter Chapman. Freddie Cocroft. Edgar Crawford. Kyle Guan. Emmeline Hayde. Vivian Khan. Darcy Cornea. <coughs> Aidan Louie. Lisa May. Demi Munro, Mia Nicol, Mia P. Perry Allison, Madeline Sands. Stent. Thea Sullivan, Melanie May Taylor Connell, Xavier Walker.
te mate, miti ki te ora, tihei mauri ora. Ko te aura ki te mauka, ko te waita ki te aua, he uri ahau no ikaraki, no te maru ahau ahakoa. Ke o te poti tāku kaia e nai nei. He tumuaki au ki te kārete o Kalamba. Ko te whare karakia, Leith Presbyterian te whare nui. Ko Andrew Tokutane, ko Elliot Rato, ko Theo, ko Eliana, ko Abriel Toku Aku Tamariki. Ko Carissa Nicol Toku Inua, nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. It is wonderful to be with you today, to share in the celebration of our commitment to growth and learning. And I just want to thank you for that beautiful singing. So really, singing is such a joy to hear, and I've been really loving having the junior school in our chapels and assemblies. So for those of you who haven't met me yet, in my mihi, I explained that I did some of my growing up in Timaru but I've chosen to put my roots down here in Ōtikoti, Dunedin. I'm married to Andrew, I have four children, and one of them is in our Year 6 leavers. I am delighted to be the Tumawaki, the principal here at Columba College, and I have the privilege now of announcing our general awards. Very important awards. So, to begin, we have the Beginner's Cup for Swimming, which goes to, now hold on, before I say the name, we're going to hold our applause, or we're going to clap for every single one? I think one. we can clap individually. Right. Are you ready? <laughs> it goes to Stella Hawkins. Gilchrist Cup for the Senior Swimming Champion, Georgie Wellington. <laughs> the Nolene Bennett's Trophy for the fastest cross country time for girls, Abrielle Nicholl. Nolene Bennett's trophy for the fastest cross country time for boys, Samuel Riley. <laughs> the Langdon Early Cup for the best all round sporting ability in a junior school boy, Henry Prattley. for the best all-round sporting ability in a junior school girl, Matilda Brown. <laughs> the best all-round Kiwi netball player, Harper Fisher. Julian Burns Brinsel Art Award for Progress in Art, Mae Russell. <laughs> the Nan Medlicott Medal for the Most Improved Speech Pupil, Lucas Toy.
me. I'm Julia Scott. And I'm a member of the Board of Trustees and I also sit on the Board of Governors and I'm here today to speak on behalf of the Board of Governors and the Board of Trustees and with the Board of Schools. So on behalf of both boards, it's a privilege to welcome you all here today to celebrate together the students of the Junior School for 2023. I love Junior Prize giving. It's the start of the holidays, guys. And Christmas and summer, apparently, are just around the corner. Apparently tomorrow it's going to be 28 degrees. After a long year for us all, we're on the home straight. Hang in there, we've just got prize giving. The boards are really grateful to the wonderful staff across the entire school, but particularly in the junior school. I would like to take a moment to thank them for all their hard work and the dedication that you poured into the junior students and their families. And also, I would like to acknowledge and have us not forget the lovely office team. And I know that through the year they provide ice and sympathy, and I thank the odd chocolate, Mrs Dempster, um, to help with the tears through the year. And, um, and I think that it would be a really nice time for us to thank them. <laughs> Mrs Hogg and her stunning staff have been very busy ensuring the junior school ticks along and keeps the boards informed throughout the year of the progress of how you've all been going. I, um, I got to shake the hand of a really impressive young man called Samuel a few weeks ago. By chance I was in the office and he came in to report that he'd raised hundreds of dollars from his bake sale for a charity. Mrs Hogg told me with really happy sparky eyes and they were all lit up and she said there are so many students doing wonderful things in the junior school as service for other people that it makes her and all of her staff really proud. And I think um, the pride was just boosting out of Mrs Hogg's eyes that day. It's also a time um, from a board perspective to acknowledge specifically, specifically the parents of the junior school. Primary schools run on volunteer parent help. We are grateful and our college thrives because of your amazing parent help to ensure that the camps, the day trips, the special treat days, the church services, fundraisers and community events are all supported and successful. Thank you all also for your ongoing support of the ABC. The ABC helps us prioritise investing in smaller classes below ministry ratios. We can have specialist subject teachers as well as, as well as a dedicated pastoral support team including a chaplain and it gives us the opportunity to focus on our youngest members of our community. 2023 has been an exceptionally busy year for the boards. After well-deserved ministry sabbatical, we farewell Mrs Duthie into retirement and then we welcome Ms Reitmeyer back and through the door and out of retirement to be our acting principal for two terms. While the boards together had a lot of fun and we had a lot of fun looking for a new principal, we got excited when we found Mrs Nicholl. And so we farewell Ms Reitmeyer back out the door, back into retirement, and she handed Mrs Nicholl the reins to be our wonderful new college principal. We now have a team of college leaders who are focused on prioritising pastoral support for all students and staff of the college. And the boards have been thinking a lot this year about how do we enable every student every day to know that you're all part of the Columba family. And then I found Bob. I know, right? How cute is Bob? Bob lives over here on the senior school. He lives in the biology department. He's very happy here. And apparently, and I've had it assured that it's true, sometimes the big girls dance with him because you can actually, like, you can dance with Bob. So there's also a Mrs. Bob, apparently, but I've not met her. But I've had a very good chat with Bob, and he's told me some really interesting things that I wanted to share with you today. He told me this. He said, even though Bob is a skeleton, clearly, He's made up of 206 bones, but Bob says we actually only need three bones to succeed in life. Number one, Bob says we all need a wishbone. Bob said that the wishbone is located up in here, around in here, and he said it's close to your heart. The wishbone is the same place for adults and for children. This bone, well up here, close to our heart, contains our hopes and our dreams and our wishes, both big and small. It's also the bone that keeps us facing forward because that's important. It's your job to grow this bone 
because your wishes are yours and they're not anyone else's. And it's your job to keep sure, to keep, to make sure that you keep thinking and dreaming every day too. That's what your wishbone is for. Having a big wishbone will make sure that you are not walking backwards through the day because we all know that facing backwards and walking does not go well. The wishbone is also very flexible because wishes can change and that's okay. And your wishbone does not care what anyone else thinks. Interestingly, the wishbone up in here is actually able to control other parts of your body too. So when someone is mean about your wishes and your hopes and your dreams, your wishbone can tell your tongue to go and your ears to go and ignore them. So remember, Bob says, you need a wishbone and that growing a wishbone is your own job. Number two, Bob said, the second bone we need is here. It's a backbone. He said that a backbone is a no-nonsense bone and it's like a big steel rod that keeps us from falling over. That's why it's so long. A backbone is like a storage cupboard with everything we need. It contains courage to stand our ground when things aren't quite right. A backbone um, also holds the big deep breaths that we need during difficult times. The backbone is tough and it helps us to get to our goals. A backbone does not care about failing and it laughs at perfection. But to grow a backbone, we need help because no one can grow a backbone by themselves. It's quite difficult to grow a backbone. A backbone needs values to thrive. It needs integrity and it needs discipline, grace, respect, courage, honesty, and most of all, family and love. It is our jobs as boards and the college to help support every member of our Columbia family grow a backbone that is like steel infused with special character. The backbone is really strong and if you look at it and you follow the bones that attach it all the way around, they come all the way around, you will see that they wrap around the heart to keep the wishbone safe and sound so it can also thrive and succeed. So number two, we need a backbone of steel to keep our wishbone safe. And that is a job that the college is here to help with. Lastly, Bob said, there's a trick bone. He said to me, you think they're here on each elbow, and it's a funny bone. He said, we do need a funny bone, but you're wrong, because it is not like other bones at all. The funny bone is actually located down in here. He said, down in your belly, where all the belly loves are, and where the infectious diseases are held. It's a team bone, because everything is more funny when we laugh with others. The funny bone is where the giggles start and the big belly laughs are. It's where we laugh at ourselves or our silly friends or anything that we find funny, and sometimes things that are not so funny but we think they're funny. And we also laugh. When we laugh, our funny bone grows really fast. Belly laughing is a fun and fun is also infectious, and it is a really good disease to pass on. It is a good infectious disease. Having a well-developed funny bone supports our backbone, so that when we make mistakes, we don't take ourselves too seriously. If you don't have a funny bone, you can become too worried about yourself, and in your sad, you forget to enjoy stuff, you forget to be excited about tomorrow, and without a big funny bone, the backbone and the wishbone they get really weak. Bob was really clear about growing a funny bone. He said, it's the job of us all together to grow a funny bone and we need to practice it every day. Growing a funny bone is a team activity. So, Bob also said, we might have to accept that when Dad tells a joke, he's not that funny, even though he thinks he is. And that's okay, because we can't actually grow a funny bone without some bad jokes along the way. Good old Bob. Look at Bob. Two, out of 206 bones, Bob says only three bones matter. A wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. The board's goals for 2024 is we're going to listen to Bob. On behalf of the 
behalf of the college, I would like to thank you all for this wonderful year. We wish you all a very happy holidays, enjoying the festive season, take some time out and get some belly laughs in. And I'm going to leave you with two really bad Christmas jokes to get you started. The first joke is, what did Miss Eason teach Santa's elves at school? The alphabet. <laughs> And the other one is one for Miss Hogg. It's a knock knock joke. She's going to have to participate. <laughs> knock knock, Miss Hogg. Who's there? Who's there? Mary. Mary who? Merry Christmas. <laughs>
going to do now, I'm going to ask you all to stand up very quietly and undo your blazers, please. That's better, and now you can sit down. Thank you. I'd like to invite Mr. Aaron Everett, our Deputy Principal, to come forward, please. And Mr. Everett is going to award the class prizes. 
I'd like to invite Year 3 to come up. The following students will be receiving their Certificates of Achievement. Amos Anderson. Liliana Choi. Poppy Cuthbertson. Sarah Duncan in absentia. Evie Foote. Amy Howe, Aria Hines, Mitchell Lang, Julia Lee in absentia, Eva Munro. Murray, Tariel Patterson, and Torrin Walker in absentia. Let's give these children a big hand. I'd like to invite Charlie Sims to come forward, please, to receive. The Scripture Prize and a Certificate of Achievement. The prize for progress in Year 3 goes to Linton Somerville. <laughs> Diligence, Valerie Tag. Merit, Anamara. And general excellence to Liam Choi. Well done. I would like to please invite the year forecast to come forward. children will be receiving their Certificates of Achievement. James Bicknell. Amelia Chen. George Crayford. Lachlan Dexter. Beatrice Haid, Georgie Lamb, Caitlin McCauley, Ileana Peniamina, Oscar Rees, Ollie Song, Ela Talatma, Caroline Taylor Connell. Sammy Walker, Tears of Charupa, and 
Dean's rookie year. Can we please give them a round of applause? I would like to invite Alwyn Goffrey to come forward who receives the Scripture Award and Certificate of Achievement. The Progress Award in Year 4 goes to Amelia Taylor. Diligence goes to Claudia Collin. Merit, Lulu Kissel. And general, ele general excellence goes to Hugh Crawford. I would like to invite the Year 5 class to please come forward. children will receive their certificates of achievement. Bella Alderson in absentia. Carson Box. Jet Cook. Ella D. Cooper. Mia Dong in absentia. Giselle Carter Essie. Emerson Dorkin. Maya Hayden. Ashia Hines. Chloe Hines. Serena Lee in absentia. Lexi Lowe. Maya Mara. Linda May. Annabelle Morrison. Edward Payton. Gabrielle Van Aert. Dylan Wayne. Georgie Wellington. Lawrence Woodham. Scripture Prize and Certificate of Achievement is awarded to Grace T. <laughs> Prize for Progress in Year 5, Michaela Lang in absentia. The Prize for Diligence goes to Shukrali Madas in Shalita. The Merit Prize, Liam Mao. <laughs> and 
Doctrinal Excellence in Year 5, Samuel Murphy. I'd like to invite the Year 6 class to please come forward. Receiving Certificates of Achievement are Oliver Ecklin. Ruby Anderson. Matilda Brown. Lucas Choi, Oliver Crayford, Harper Fisher, <coughs> Audrey Haid. Lily Nicada, Henry Prettley, Hazel Reese, May Russell. Sersha Seaflight in Absentia, Archie Sinclair, Gwendolyn Somerville, Nara Steed, and Chloe Wesley-Jones. Scripture and Certificate of Achievement, Alicia Ch Chiruka. <laughs> the Diligence Award goes to Kate Seaton. <laughs> Credit, Gemma Body. The Merit Award goes to Leo Mundy. <laughs> and receiving general excellences are Samuel Riley and Hugh Walker. If you want them to clap again in the front row, let's give them all a big clap, shall we? I'm also quite delighted to see how you've already taken on Bob's advice of growing the funny bone. How, how many itchy socks were there? Two. Two.
to which he sucks. I liked all those giggles that I heard and you joining in. Well done. You, I think it was the first time you'd heard that and I could I had a lot of joy watching you having joy actually. So here we have a picture of some pearls. Well this is a prize giving, so which pearl do you think would win the prize? Number one? Number two is kind of a bit wonky looking. Three or four. Hands up for one. Hands up for two. Hands up for three. Hands up for four. Ah, oh, pretty discerning. The correct answer, according to the experts, would be number four. Um, that's because it's the most round and shiny and high quality, so least imperfections. By the way, we don't choose our prize winners by um, folks like that. <laughs> so, do you know how pearls are made? It's basically a mollusk and a little bit of sand or something gets in there and it's annoying. It finds its way inside the shell and it irritates. And the way that it is dealt with by the mollusk is it like secretes or it lets out a little substance that coats around the outside of that little bit of sand. Layer by layer, little by little, it coats around and around and around that little bit of sand and it turns into a pearl. So the mollusk treats its problem by taking some action. It takes an annoying problem and it actually turns it into something beautiful. And I wonder, my first thought for today, is if perhaps how do we treat things that we find annoying or people that we find annoying or difficult? Is it possible that perhaps if we treated them little by little with kindness, gentleness, generosity, with our Columba values, that we might find that our problem turns from something that's a little bit irritating into actually something quite beautiful, maybe a friendship. In some ways, we're all like pearls. It takes a long time to make a pearl. All this little building up layer and layer and layer takes ages. And it actually takes ages for us to be formed too. A lot of investment from people around us adding a layer of support or understanding and slowly, little by little, we grow into our full selves. As you can see, this is a picture of some pearls and no two pearls are exactly alike. Perfect pearls are very difficult to find. Most pearls have some imperfections and actually they are accepted as part of what makes pearls beautiful. Imperfections give it character, give it depth. Perfectly imperfect pearls go on to be amazing pieces of art or jewellery. As humans, you know, we're not perfect either. No two people are exactly alike either. God has made us wonderfully. We're all very precious and unique. And my third thought about pearls is that pearls are great together. Today I'm wearing a necklace. It's made up of a whole lot of unmatched, uneven, quirky, individual pearls. I quite like that they're all a bit different and quirky because this reminds us of us as a community. These pearls are all connected together with a bit of string. One pearl on its own, it could not stretch around my neck to make a good necklace. But when these pearls work together, they make something that, well, I think is beautiful. And so this chunky bits of here and there and everywhere, it's like a community of people. We're all individual, all different, but when we come together, we can make something quite fantastic. Relationships connect us like string. And if we have strong, good ties with each other, built on kindness and, and forgiveness and gratefulness and kind of values, we're like a beautiful necklace. So even though today we're actually celebrating the achievements of individuals, and it is great to see a lot of you are doing some amazing things and winning some prizes, I just want us to remember that ultimately our flourishing and our succeeding is something we do together. 
as part of a community. It takes all the input of all the teachers, of your parents, to enable you as an individual to flourish. It's teamwork that comes together. So like a necklace of pearls, we can work together and we can be something even more fantastic. I'd like to invite Mrs Scott now to come and read out some of those very special awards that we've got to finish our service. Diligence and helpfulness in the junior school goes to co recipients this year of Oliver Crayford and Gwendolyn Somerville. Character of the junior school goes to Audrey Hyde. Thank you. 
going to do a little job for me. Um, Mrs Crump and Mrs Lodge, would you please come forward? Would you come forward? I'm going to call the year sixes up individually to receive their balloon. They will receive it and file out down the back of the hall and outside. Please make sure you hold on very tightly, okay? <laughs> Right, Oliver Ackland. Ruby Anderson. Right. Let's give him a clap. I'm going to ask Mr. Everett if he might like to tie a knot around a wrist. It might help out there. Thank you. <laughs> Gemma Body.